This is five on your side at four. Focused on you. Right now at four, we are in weather alert as a steady dose of rain takes over the bi-state. Let's take a live look over downtown St. Louis. Today's rain could make a mess of your evening commute. Thank you for joining us. I'm Brent Solomon. And I'm Kay Quinn. While severe weather isn't expected, we will see plenty of rain over the next 24 hours. Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell joining us now with the Weather First forecast. And Kay and Brent, it's all about where you are with this particular system. Right now, we're talking about mainly light rain in the metro area, even a mist. It's been enough to get the roads wet, of course, and that means we slow things down. That's a look over at Forest Park and Kings Highway, where, of course, at this hour of the day, you would expect it to be a bit congested and indeed it is, but traffic is still flowing. We'll run our weather alert through the evening hours as the rain. We actually see an uptick in that rainfall, not only in coverage, but it will be getting heavier as we head towards later this evening and continuing into tonight. You see the rains expanding down to our south right now. What we've had around the metro area for most of the afternoon specifically Inside 255 270 loop has been this mist that's been ongoing while the steadier rain has been down to our south. That area is expanding. It's moving towards St. Louis. And as we head through the evening hours, the anticipation is we'll watch that area expand and continue to drift into the metro area. Now, as you go farther north and west of St. Louis, not so much of a concern, much lesser amounts in terms of rainfall there. But the top of the arch already shrouded in clouds and drizzle and mist and that light rain. The rain is increasing this evening. The heaviest will be southeast of St. Louis through the overnight hours where more than an inch of rain will fall, probably in the metro area, half an inch to an inch overall. Gusty winds will also be developing late tonight into tomorrow. More about that and the big changes coming for the weekend in a few minutes, Brent. Well, Scott, the rain didn't stop the ball game over at Bush. Here's a live look over the stadium. Take a look at that. The Redbirds play the Phillies in an afternoon matinee. The Cardinals rallied a comeback late in the game, but fell short 4-3. to three. And that rainy weather forcing Moda to postpone work on the ramp from Interstate 55 to Bates. Crews were expected to update shoulders, curbs, drainage, and guardrails at exit 203. No word on when that work will begin. The project expected to take about a week to be completed. You can get the Weather First forecast right on your phone. Just text the word weather to 314-425-5355. We'll send it straight to you. Let's get over to some breaking news now out of southern Missouri. Right now, police are looking for a man who took a three-year-old boy from Perryville. You may have received that Amber Alert this afternoon after police say 33-year-old Donald Laurent took Isaiah Laurent. The alert says Donald called the boy's mother, making credible threats towards the three-year-old. Police say they are traveling in a white 2007 Mercury Grand Marquis with an Alabama license plate, number 50A242P. Police believe they may be in Tennessee now, traveling to Alabama. Follow on your side, we'll stay on top of this breaking story for you. Look for updates on air online on KSDK.com and on the Five on Your Side app. Everything's back to normal at Scott Air Force Base after a dog alerted to a suspicious device this morning. Hours ago, the military dog signaled to personnel during a vehicle search at the base's Mascuta Gate. A shelter-in-place order was given as the Explosive Ordnance Disposal Team responded. The all clear was given before noon after a search failed to find anything. Thieves targeting a number of South St. Louis businesses. It was early this morning. Security camera footage shows they robbed one of the businesses twice overnight. Five on your side's Holden Kerwicki reports from Soulard. Outside of Big Daddy's and Soulard, there are signs asking patrons to please practice personal responsibility. But owner John Valiff says that didn't stop two thieves from breaking in a number of businesses early Wednesday morning. Around 4.45 in the morning, security cameras inside Big Daddy's caught two people smash in a window with a brick before climbing in and helping themselves to multiple bottles of liquor and all of the cash registers before leaving and coming back 10 minutes later with what appears to be a gun. The owners of 1860 Saloon, Molly's and Soulard, and Bogart Smokehouse reported that the same suspects also broke into their businesses overnight. Big Daddy's owner, John Valiff, told Five on Your Side that after 25 years in business, he's learned that incidents like this may not be common in Soulard, but they're still unacceptable. It's not normal around here. You know, it should not be accepted. Let's just say that. There should be justice for all this, and people should be held accountable. 
held accountable for their action. Anyone with any information about these break ins is being urged to call St. Louis Metro Police. But coming up at 6 o'clock, hear why one business owner is frustrated with the way police are responding. Reporting in Soulard, Holden Kruwicki, 5 on your side. All right, hold on things. Someone shot and killed a man near St. Louis University last night. Police say it was over a drug deal. Officers showed up to the Coronado Apartments on Lindell just before 8 last night. The male victim went to the hospital. That's where he died. Right now, police are looking for who did it. They say there is no danger to the university. New information on a shooting that left the teen hurt yesterday. It happened on Kennerly Avenue around 2.30. Investigators say two 16-year-old boys were walking when someone in an Audi started shooting at them and then drove off. One of the teens was shot in the chest. He went to the hospital with serious injuries. The other boy was not hurt. Right now, police do not have any suspect information. Now to that stubbornly high inflation rate. Surging gas prices and high housing prices caused it to jump 3.5% last month, making it less likely the Fed will lower interest rates and send the stock market plunging. And despite the high prices, the economy remains strong. As NBC's Alice Barr reports, it's a top issue on the campaign trail. An unnerving number today shows inflation ticked up again in March, adding to the strain on Americans' wallets and the political pressure on President Biden. We're better situated than, than we were when we took office, where we, inflation was skyrocketing, and we have a plan to deal with it. Consumer prices rose 3.5 percent year over year, up from 3.2 percent the month before, with rent, gas and auto insurance especially hard hit. Though grocery price increases slowed. Overall, Americans have seen average prices increase more than 20 percent since the start of the pandemic. Former President Trump seizing on the new report. Biden has totally lost control of inflation. It's back. In a statement, President Biden saying inflation has dropped more than 60 percent from its peak and that reining it in further remains his top economic priority, noting the strong jobs market and rising wages that fuel price increases. Adding to the challenges, the stock market tumbled on the news with investors concerned about interest rates. The Fed cannot move to lower interest rates when prices are still showing signs that they could be trending higher. Hopes are fading for rate cuts that could bring substantial relief in the housing market as inflation appears stuck at an elevated level with painful effects for consumers and the politicians searching for solutions. In Washington, Alice Barr, NBC News. It's a do or die playoff situation for the Blues. What the team needs to do in order to get a wild card spot. Getting tech help into underserved neighborhoods. The free digital help desk that can get you connected. And more scrutiny for Boeing. Hear from a whistleblower who says he was threatened after calling the company out.